So welcome to session two of Creative Ignition. And I hope that you really felt in that first session a sense of something new opening out, new possibilities, new facts that you maybe hadn't come across before. And more than anything else, I hope you feel like it's an excitement that you know, there is something new emerging on this planet and you can be a part of it. And in this session, I really want to drill into that and give you one of the most powerful exercises you will ever do uh, around how you can be a part of this amazing, you know, new world that is, that is you know, becoming. Um, so in this session, I want to give you, I want to start with, what is the scope of the opportunity that exists? We finished the last session acknowledging that there has never been a greater need for you to make a living and make a difference doing what you love, nor has there ever been a greater opportunity. And I really want to speak to that. So if you might have something that you could sell online, let me give you a sense of just what that means, okay? The e-commerce market, which simply means stuff that's sold through the internet, in 2015 was worth $1.9 trillion. And it is growing at 20% a year. What is that? That's a huge figure. It's very hard to kind of just bring it you know, into reality. Well, if every single person on the planet had a share of $1.9 trillion, every person would have more than $2,500. So that means that every year, if 7 billion people were given some spending money to spend on stuff from the internet, they would each have more than $2,500. So there's quite an opportunity there. And we are really shifting to a world where mobile devices are becoming the way we interact with the internet. And uh, I was watching a video the other day and it said that every 35 minutes in the UK, one million pounds gets spent using mobile devices. So there is an, just an incredible opportunity. But we're going to explore a bit, you know, what that really means for you a little bit later in this session, okay? I want to just speak to one other thing. We looked at the kind of the core driving elements of human evolution, being entrepreneurship. Uh, being the desire for innovation and then to sell that innovation to communities. And there really is another element to this as well, which is that any time in nature there is a massive imbalance, nature will do something to correct that balance. Okay? And if we can harness these principles, again, it presents such a wonderful opportunity for us because we currently have some really massively imbalanced things in this world that are causing some real challenges such as the amount of plastic waste that there currently is. Well, did you know that very easily you can make alcohol, which you can run cars on, you could run planes on if you wish to, uh, you can make alcohol from waste plastic. So whilst we have these huge imbalances, anywhere there is one, there is also potentially a huge opportunity. But you know what? We do not have a resources problem on this planet. You know, people talk about, oh, you know, there's, there's not enough food, there's not enough water. We do not have a resources problem on this planet. We have a willingness problem. So, we, we, you know, there's not enough water for everyone. Well, we have a vast planet that's covered in salted water. And we have techniques for desalination to make drinking water out of salted water. We have the techniques, we have the technology, we have the resources. We do not currently have the willingness. And that is where you, as an entrepreneur can start to help tell a different story that creates that willingness. Because we are truly in a period of crisis. And there are a number of definitions for crisis that I want to speak to before we dive into the practical element of this exercise. Crisis can mean a turning point. People talk about a healing crisis, which is where you get to a point where the fever reaches its highest point, and that's when you're in the healing crisis, and then it starts to subside. Your body, actually, the height of the fever is your body cooking the virus so it dies off. So you have this healing crisis to allow you to actually then get better. And in the Chinese language, the symbol, the Chinese symbol for crisis is made up of two different symbols. The symbol for danger and the symbol for opportunity. And it really does speak to what we are faced with in the new story. We face some urgent dangers but we also have, because of those dangers, unprecedented opportunity to make a living and make a difference doing something we love. And 
I have one little thing I want to show you that speaks to why you doing what you love and trying to serve others with it is such a powerful thing. So uh, let's go over to this little video, shall we? So the glass in the center, as you can see, represents you, all your potential, your pristine beauty, your gifts, your talents. That is you. The glass on the right represents the new story. Everything that is so incredible and so possible when we talk about the new story, the abundance, the connection, the joy, all of that which represents us in the new story. Now the left-hand glass, of course, is the old story. The darkness, the negativity, the fear, the limitation, the narrow-mindedness, the scarcity. And of course, like you, I have been conditioned by that old story. We have all been conditioned and so the old story impacts our confidence, our creativity, our joy. But if we add the new story, if we keep ourselves topped up with the new story, then what happens is our ability to truly express and be in the world in our fullest possible way is absolutely maximised and, and consistent as well. It stays with us. And of course, the more of us that keep ourselves topped up with the new story, that live the new story, well then, the new story, not surprisingly, begins to wash away and purify the old story. That is the power and the potential of what we are talking about here and why I'm so passionate about helping you to really connect with what it is that you could offer as you step into living the new story. So I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration and that it gave you a kind of real powerful visual representation of the power of you doing what you love, giving your joy to the world. And maybe you've never heard of a morphic field before, but now you know that we really are talking about some groundbreaking new research that is you know, so key to changing this story that we've been a part of. I want to speak to one other thing before we dive into the practical session, which is, which is this, your fingerprint. Of course, there's over 7 billion people on our planet, and not one of them has the same fingerprint as you. And do you know that the chances of you existing are in the region of 120 trillion to 1. Now, when you combine that with the chances of the world even existing at all, like the conditions that were required to create life on this planet, um, it, the only possible conclusion is that you are here for a reason. And that is for you to choose. And that is why I'm so excited you've chosen to be on this Creative Ignition journey, because it is my commitment to you to do everything in my power, and our community as well, to do everything in our power to support you to choose what that reason is and to start pursuing it. Now, one thing that really will be useful to getting a grasp on as you seek to start giving your gift, to sharing your joy, is to understand the rules of the new story. Because there were some rules that the old story depended on and there are some rules for the new story. The old story went like this. Here's the rules. You go to school, you get your grades and you get your job. And that was it. That is how the process works in the old story. And it, well, it hasn't really worked, has it? So here are the rules of the new story. You find something you love doing and you get brilliant at it. You find something you love doing and you get brilliant at it. Why, why is this so important? Well, because when you are brilliant at something, you're doing it to a high level, which means you're making a massive difference. And if you're doing something to a high level, you're going to get paid at a high level as well. So you are giving the maximum enrichment and receiving the maximum enrichment. And that is why I say there has never been a greater opportunity to make a living and make a difference doing what you love because of the power of morphic fields and because the new story works on those rules, not the limiting rules of the old story. So are you ready to discover what your thing might be? Now you may have a fairly clear idea on what your, your thing might be, but what I really want to make you aware of is something we're actually going to be covering in one of the later sessions, and that is the idea of an ecosystem. Today, 
It is all about creating a personal brand in which you have an ecosystem of different ways you can make a living and make a difference. Okay, and this exercise we're going to do called True You is a really great way to begin getting a sense of what your ecosystem might be, to begin connecting with what your true assets might be. So if you're ready, let's do it. So welcome to this first exercise of this Creative Ignition journey. Now, this screen may be familiar to you if you completed your Synergy Sweet Spot exercise in the lead up to coming on the Creative Ignition journey. If you didn't and you just dive straight in, well, no problem at all. We're going to cover it in this session. Uh, and if you did, well, great, you're ahead of the game. So this exercise is all about uh, exploring the seven areas which uh, over the years in doing journeys like this, programs like this with people of all ages and backgrounds, uh, helping them to explore these seven areas I've found has been a very powerful way of connecting them with things they may already be aware of but weren't considering as um, things that they might do to make a living and make a difference. Uh, and maybe even things that they hadn't even thought of, things that they didn't, didn't even really know were important to them. And now that we want, once they work, go through this exercise, they're like, oh, I never thought about that. But of course, it makes sense now. Um, so I really hope that uh, for you going through this exercise, you will have uh, either similar reinforcement of the things you know are important to you and... There may also be things where you go, oh, I never thought of that. And, and, you know, and that's the purpose is if you've got a few things we can begin to work with as we go through the rest of the 30 sessions, well, you know, it's going to be fantastic because the end result is going to be that you're going to have a way of understanding how you can move forward and how you can communicate what you're doing, not just to the world, but to people who will ultimately be your supporters, your customers, the people you're going to serve. OK, so. These seven areas uh, form a very useful uh, acronym, True You. And here's what we're going to do. Here's how the exercise works. I'm going to talk you through each of the seven areas. And if you've got the, the playbook, uh, you can fill in your answers in the playbook. Uh, if you've just got a journal that you're using, that's great as well. Um, so however you want to capture your notes and go through the exercise is fine. But I'd really encourage you uh, for the next probably half an hour, to just, you know, eliminate all distractions um, and really focus on working through this. And big thing here is don't sense yourself too much. Don't think about what ought to be the answers. There's no right or wrong. This isn't a freaking exam. Really just kind of write down what comes up for you as you hear my voice or as you, you know, think of what's coming up for you yourself. OK, so the first thing that we, we want to explore, the first area is your talents. So what are your talents? Take a moment now to write down what you consider to be your talents. And I'll give you a few other kind of ways of looking at this in a moment. But first of all, go ahead. Um, about a minute, just write down what do you think are your talents? And if you're not sure, but you think it might be, then go ahead, write it down anyway. Let's let's see. And also, what might your friends or your family say are your talents? And in this, we're talking about good ones, right? Not the kind of he he eats all the chocolate or she, uh, you know, she leaves her clothes all over the living room. Not that sort of talent. The good ones. And there's some other ways to think about talents. If you're, you know, if you're struggling to kind of think of a lot of talents, then, um, you know, what what would people say are your strengths? Because a talent is ultimately any pattern of behaviour that serves you or serves others. Okay. So, are you a good listener? You know, is that what some people might say about you? Are you someone who's a natural leader? Have you been told that before? All of these would be talents because they are patterns of behaviour. OK, so what are your strengths? What positive patterns of behavior do you have? You know, are you someone who's good at organizing, good at planning? Are you good at seeing the bigger picture? 
Are you good at seeing someone else's point of view? So by now you should have, you know, here's the hope, you know, five or six things as a minimum written down. If not, don't worry. Um, have a think about this. You know, what what things either recently or, or in the past have you learnt really easily? Um, what things have you maybe uh, enjoyed doing, like just had a fantastic time, but you haven't revisited them. But when you were doing them, you felt like, you know, you were a natural at them. Um, you know, has anyone ever said to you, oh, you're a natural at this? Um, so, yeah, what have you learned very quickly in the past or what have people said you're a natural at? Um, those, are, you know, those are often clues of some hidden or latent talents. And one final thing, you know, what what do you do that that wows people? You know, what do you do that wows people? You know, me, I make great pancakes, you know, um, you know, secretly as well as being, uh, you know, the guide for this creative ignition journey. I'm also one of the world's best pancake makers. So, you know, what do you do that leaves people going, oh, wow, that's amazing. What are your party pieces? Brilliant. So that's that's talent. And listen, as we go through this, if any if any more crop up there, you know, oh, yeah, now, now I remember, you know, it, when, they, when we're exploring any of the other areas, then, of course, just pause the video, pop it down in the talent section. OK, so that's talents. The next is routines, routines. And here the question we're trying to answer is what routines do you have that serve you that are positive in your life? So if you have a routine of going to the gym, that's a very obvious one. Um, do you have a routine of having a very regular bedtime where you get, you know, the, the amount of sleep that is good for you? Um, so what routines do you have that serve you? And this could be, you know, you know it could be something like, you know, every week you make an effort to call at least one family member or one of your friends. You know, that's. That's a routine that serves you and, of course, is serving other people as well. So it doesn't necessarily just have to be the kind of physical, I go to the gym regularly thing. It could be, you know, the other things you make an effort to do regularly as well. So what are your routines? Do you have a regular meditation practice? And that could, of course, be, you know, mean different things to different people. Do you, do you enjoy juggling? Do you enjoy painting? You know, are these, are these things you regularly do? Do you have some kind of creative activity that you regularly do? You know, if you, if you're, a, you know, if you're an uncle or an aunt or a parent, do you, do you regularly pick up or look after a, a you know, a child? So what do you regularly do that you feel is a positive thing for you? Fantastic. So that's, that's our routines. And, and the aim is, you know, can we get, you know, at least four things ideally written down in each area and if if not don't worry but if you've got more than that fantastic um but it just the the, the more we can put put down the, the the bigger a picture we can create of who you are and, and the things that might turn out to be your your gifts your talents your assets okay so the next next area to explore is uniqueness what is it that makes you unique and this could be everything from uh, the, the style of hair you choose to have, how you, how you keep your hair, the clothes you choose to wear, um, the nail polish or lipstick that you might like, um, right across to the kind of music you enjoy, um, even the, the political views you have, uh, the, the books you choose to read, the places you choose to visit, the food you choose to eat. So 
what are the things that make you unique? Right from the kind of the most physical, like clothes and stuff, down to the, you know, what are your spiritual beliefs? All that sort of stuff. Everything that, you know, people say, oh, that, you know, is unique about you. So how do you show up in the world? You know, what do people know you for? Are you the crazy outgoing type with clothes to match? Are you the, are you the quiet type? Still waters run deep. And of course, a great question to answer when we're exploring, you know, what makes you unique is what would, what would other people, what would you, again, what would your family, your friends say is unique about you? And of course, perhaps an even more important question, what do you believe is unique about you? You know, what do you believe in terms of your outlook on life is unique about you? Do you have answers to questions that others haven't seen yet? So what makes you unique? And you may find that, you know, some of the things you wrote down in talents also show up in your uniqueness. That's fine. Absolutely no problem at all. Um, and there may well be more and more overlap as we continue with the, uh, the other areas. That's great. All it means is that perhaps this is a strong thing for you, a strong area for you. So um, if, there is, if there is overlap, no problem at all. Still write it down, definitely. And uh, there probably will be some as we head into this next area, which is engagement. What do you choose to engage with? So do you choose to, you know, read a particular newspaper or visit particular websites regularly? Uh, do you, you know, do you do some volunteering or some charity work? Do you coach uh, a junior sports team? Do you write letters to your MP? Uh, do you, do you go to, uh, you know, any fitness groups or any, uh, you know, writing groups? What's, what do you choose to engage with regularly? And with engagement, you might include, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you do for fun? What kinds of people online, like the social media world, do you choose to follow? What things do you share on Facebook, on Twitter? All of these are things you engage with. What kind of things do you like learning about? You know, what, what YouTube videos do you prefer to watch? What kind of documentaries do you like? What kind of films do you like? You know, are you someone who likes to learn from books? What do you engage with? How do you choose to experience the world? And an important question here is definitely, you know, what do you, what do you do right now that brings you joy? What do you engage in that, uh, that makes you smile, that makes you happy?
to what you engage in. And you, you've probably found that there'll be some things around your uniqueness or your routines um, that do definitely overlap into your engagement. That's fine. Like I said, no problem at all. Definitely note it down or note those things down um, because all it does is highlight how important these things are for you. So our next next area, really key one, really key one in my opinion, youth. What did you love doing when you were younger? What did you love doing when you were younger? When you didn't have to concern yourself with, you know, paying bills or finding work or, you know, raising kids or any of this stuff, uh, whatever you might be currently, uh, you know, currently engaged in. Uh, there's that word again. Um, what did you love doing when you were younger? You know, say from the age of, you know, naught to 15, 16, you know, what did you love doing? And, you know, one of the good ways to track this is what are some of your most happy memories from your childhood? What were you doing during those periods? What was happening? You know, were you winning a were you winning a sports game? Were you you know, were you on the beach with your family and friends? Were you camping in the woods? You know, what were you doing when you were at your happiest as a child? And I'll give you I'll give you a few moments for this one because it's you know it's really key, really important. So what did you love doing when you were younger? And of course, it may well be that you're you're continuing to engage in those things uh, now. So, you know, there may be some overlap between engagement and youth as well. Again, no problem at all. And reminder again, if if you need more time with any of these sections, obviously, just, you know, just pause the video and, and fill out as much as you need to write down as much as you need to. The more things we have to consider, the better. So our next one, really another really big one, really, really big one for me is uh, outspoken. What gets you outspoken? And by that, I mean, what, what stirs your emotions? What gets you to the point where you say something? And there's, there's two elements to this, right? Uh, let's consider the first. What, what gets you outspoken in a brilliant way? What inspires you? What are you like? Oh, my God, you've got to check this thing out. What, what gets you clicking share immediately on uh, some, you know, any kind of social media stuff? You know, so what do you think? Oh, like, this is amazing. If only all the world could see this or, you know, if only there was more of this. What, what gets you outspoken? You know, are you passionate about a sports team? Does that get you outspoken? Are you passionate about politics? Do you think we need this or we need that? Does that get you outspoken? Are you outspoken about, if you've got them, if you're of your children? Are you like, oh, they're so amazing? What gets you outspoken? Are you passionate about the planet? Do you think organic food is amazing and, you know, everyone needs to know about it? What gets you outspoken? What are you inspired by? And a good good question to consider when we're talking about what gets you brilliantly outspoken is, you know, who do you admire? Who are your role models? Who are your inspirations? And now we can shift it because there's two sides to outspoken. One is what inspires you, what motivates you to speak out and share things in a brilliant way. But the other one is, what, you know, what appalls you? What angers you? What disgusts you? Um, you know, because, and, and what makes you say, this is terrible, we need to change this, or I can't believe they've done that. Uh, what are those things? What are those things that you also, you share going, this is, this is, this is appalling. You know, what, what, what are those things? 
what gets you outspoken in, in you call it a negative way if you like, but just where you're like, where there's some real anger, energy, fire, what gets you outspoken in those areas? You know, is it human trafficking? Is it, you know, bankers and their greed? Is it, you know, is it potholes on the road? You know, whatever it, whatever it is for you, that's, that's okay. That's brilliant. Write it down. And again, I'll give you a few more moments for this because it's really key. Um, what gets you, you know, what gets you riled up? What gets you fired up? You know, what gets you ranting? You know, think back. What are the, what are the last, uh, last three or four things you ranted about? I see it all the time on my Facebook timeline. You know, people are like, rah, rah, and they go, right, rant over. I feel better now, you know. So what were the last things you ranted about? And I'm going to explain why this is such a powerful, uh, powerful area to explore in a few moments once we've done all the seven areas. But yeah, see if there's anything more, any more inspiration that you're outspoken about or any more, you know, disgust that, you know, an anger that gets you outspoken. Write down a few more things if you can. Brilliant. And so our final area to explore is universal. What do you believe should be universal for all human beings? And maybe even for all life on earth. You know, so what do you believe should be the same for everyone, should be equal for everyone? Um, what are some universals that you would like to see in the world? You know, should everyone have free education? Should everyone stop eating meat so that all animals are, are cared for? Should everyone wear blue shoes on a Friday? You know, what do you believe should be universal for every person? You know, what is it which if this thing could happen around the world, it would change the world? What's that thing? And of course, there might be some uh, overlap between your outspoken and your universal, of course. What should be the same for every human, for all life on Earth, maybe? You know, should, should trees and forests be granted the same rights as human beings? Is that one of the universals that you'd write down? Should taxes be abolished so that, you know, companies could just, you know, create whatever they wanted and therefore, you know, do business in that way? Is that a universal? Oh, no more taxes. Higher taxes for everyone. Is that a universal? Brilliant. So well done. What I'd invite you to do now is just to go back through each of those uh, areas and see if there's anything else that springs to mind. Anything else that, uh, that needs writing down in any of the, whether it's a talent, any more talents that need writing down, any more routines that serve you. Anything about you that's unique that you haven't written down so far? Is there anything you engage with that you've missed? Pop that down. Is there anything else that you used to love as a child that you used to enjoy doing that you haven't written down? Add that. Is there anything else that gets you outspoken, either inspired or appalled, that you need to capture? Go ahead. And is there any more universals, anything that should be the same for everyone that you need to add in there? Brilliant.
So that's the first part of the exercise completed. You've now hopefully got written down underneath each of the seven different areas some of the things that are important to you um, or some of the things that you recognize as being uh, key parts of yourself, be it a talent, be it something you engage with, something that you think should be universal, etc. Okay, here's the second part. Here's what we do next. And it can be a bit of a challenge, but go with it. And with this second part, the invitation is, again, in the same way that you were encouraged not to censor yourself uh, as you were going through and writing down uh, your responses to each of the seven areas. The invitation, again, as we move into this second part of the exercise, is, is not to censor yourself, to really go with, with your kind of gut feeling, with what comes up, with what, you, uh, with what you sense is the answer, rather than what you logically think should be the answer. Okay? Um, what we're going to do is I want you to go through all of the things you've written and choose the four or five things that have the most energy for you. And another way of, of considering this is to think about if you could only keep five, four or five of these things that you've written down, which four or five things would you keep as the ones you, like, you wanted to be a part of your life? Uh, say that, that you know God came down on a big cloud and was like, right, you can only keep in your life these five things. Which are the five things that you would you would keep, okay, um, as being the things that you most want to be a part of your life, okay? So go ahead and just circle circle those five things now. If you want to take a bit of time, go ahead, pause the video and take some time to be ruthless uh, and really feel into it. What are the five things that have the most energy that you'd want to keep a part of as a part of your life. Go ahead. Brilliant. So now you've done that, there's one final part to this exercise, which you may have already done um, at the start of your creative ignition journey. And that is the, uh, the synergy sweet spot. Okay. And if you haven't, uh, then, then let's dive into it now. If you have uh, done it already, then you can just skip forward the video in you know, a couple of minutes and uh, yeah, and dive into the final part, okay? But if you haven't, then let's do that now. So your synergy sweet spot is the thing that you could do which will give you the most energy and allow you to feel like you're making the biggest difference. And the exercise we're about to do may not be the full answer, but it's certainly, it's a great place to start. So I always feel like, hey, you know, you might as well give it a go. Okay, here's what we do. Of the things that you've written down, what is the thing that you most love? That most brings you alive. That gives you the most energy, the most joy. Okay, what is the thing that you most love? Go ahead and circle that now. And if you want to pause the video, go ahead, but don't take too long. Just go with, you know, I'm sure you've probably already got an answer, even as you've heard me talking. What is the thing you most love? Go with that instinctive answer, okay? Um, so go ahead, pause the video, and I'll be back with the next instruction. Brilliant. So you've got the thing you most love. Next, what is the thing of the things you've written down or that you haven't that you most loathe? What is the thing that gets you most outspoken in a negative way where you're like, ah, oh, this is just terrible. Oh, my. you know, what is the thing that you most loathe about the world, about our society, what's the thing that you'd love to change the most, okay? Um, so if you've written it down or not, go ahead, write it down, or just circle it from the list of things you've got already. And if you need to pause the video, you can, but again, I'm sure you've already got an idea of what is that thing you most loathe. Brilliant. Okay, so here's, here's, what, here's how we bring everything together. We actually shift through to, if you've got the, uh, the workbook, uh, we shift through to the True You Mastermind page. You can see it on the screen now. I want you to write down, given the five things that you've identified as the things you'd like to keep in your life that have the most energy, well, what are some ways that you could be doing those things or sharing those things as a way of making a difference in the world and making a living doing that? And here is a, you know, at this point, Definitely, definitely, definitely do post up into the Creative Uprising Facebook group your your five things. 
uh, because what you can then harness is the power of a collective mastermind as well, where all the members of the community who are fantastically supportive, it's just, it's one of the most beautiful things about this creative up uprising movement that you're a part of, is how supportive everyone is within the community. Uh, if you post up your five things, myself and all the community members can say, hey, well, you know, perhaps you could do this, perhaps you could do this. And so you tap into the power of n uh, no one being as smart as everyone, you know, of that collective uh, intelligence and brilliance, okay? So definitely post up your four or five things that you'd like to keep into the Facebook group so we can offer you some ideas and inspiration. Uh, but do this for yourself as well. So uh, when it says true, you mastermind, what are some of the ways that you, you could share your gifts, make a living doing some of the things that you've written down? And particularly uh, as well, consider... Your, your synergy sweet spot, which is, what is it that you could do using the thing that you most love to make a difference to the thing that you most loathe, okay? Um, and I believe when you can find that thing, uh, it, it, you know, it changes everything because suddenly you, you have a, a focus around how the thing that you love to do can make a difference to the thing that you find most challenging. And so you get like this double whammy this, this brilliant surge of energy from inspiration and desperation. Uh, and as we will see later on in the journey, those are two of the most powerful motivating factors for a human being. Okay, so this is the final part of the exercise. And I'll, you know, I'll let you crack on. Um, the video will finish fairly shortly. Um, but it is to write down some of the ways that those four or five things could help you make a living and make a difference in the world. And what is that thing that could be that sweet spot of the thing you most love making a difference to the thing you most loathe. And uh, if you want, again, if you want any ideas on that, post that, uh, post those things up in the Facebook group as well. Brilliant. So uh, go for it. Dive into this fast first, this final part of the exercise, and I will see you in the next session. So brilliant. Dive into this final part of the exercise and I will see you uh, in the final part of the video where we just kind of wrap up the session and we look forward into the next session as well. I'll see you there. So welcome back to my face. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that exercise and I hope that you, you found that, oh, I didn't, you know, didn't think about that, you know. Um, so I really would, you know, again, recommend that you post up some of your findings uh, some of the things you circled and highlighted into the group so that we as a community can give you the benefits of kind of a masterminding session. Remember, none of us is smarter than all of us, so uh, to definitely do that. And to conclude this session, I really want to just, you know, give you something that I hope you can take with you the rest of your life. Uh, something that when you can believe it and live from that place, changes everything. And it is the following phrase. When you dive... The universe supports you. When you dive, the universe supports you. Whatever it is that you may have highlighted from your true you process, you may be thinking, oh, I just, I'd love to do that, but I've got no idea how. All you need to do right now is to think, what is one step I can take towards it and do it, dive. Because as soon as you take that one step in the direction of your inspiration, the next step and the next step and the next step will reveal itself. That's how this works. So, what's coming in the next session? Well, if you are going to dive, you might well be asking yourself this one question. It's the question that almost everybody asks themselves at this point, and we're going to answer it in the next session. I'll see you there.